What's going on guys? Welcome back to another War Thunder video. Today I thought we'd talk a little bit about Sweden and their ground forces. Specifically their reserve tanks. Now reserve tanks generally are not something that I get too excited about. I don't think that I've ever made a video on a reserve tank for any nation. And uh, what, well things are different in this nation because things have changed. Uh, Gaijin made a change that I'm not so I'm not so sure about, and we'll get into that in a minute. But generally speaking, when I start off a, a nation of tanks, I of course start off with the reserves and just work my way up. And generally speaking, I try to get through the reserves as quickly as I can because I don't find reserve tanks to be particularly interesting to play or to go up against. Uh, they're light armor, puny guns, they are quick, they are they can be a little swirly to handle, you know, to drive, but you're, you're also often facing newer players at this tier. There's always an influx of new players, whether it's a new patch or not, and playing new players, or playing against new players isn't always that, that, uh, that interesting, in my opinion. And so I, try, I generally try to get past these tiers of tanks relatively quickly and into something a little bit stronger and going up against a, a little bit more experienced tankers than you will at uh, Battle Rating 1.0. That being said, the STRV M31 and M38, which are the two reserve tier tanks, are not bad. They were actually quite good, uh, quite respectable. 37 millimeter cannons, got about a three second reload with an expert crew, and all in all, you got pretty good uh, punch with your with your main uh, with your shells. The stock shell, I believe, is just your your basic AP shell. Then you can get an an, up, an upgraded shell that features a little bit of uh, TNT filler, and that did okay. I was able to do relatively well. I was able to finish spading the uh, reserve tier tanks and then begin working on the 1.3 and 1.7 battle rating tanks. Unlocking those. As you've seen so far, nothing that I've faced has been particularly strongly armored. Uh, everything from the side is pretty easy to pen. Well, I should say most things from the side are easy to pen. The one vehicle that I struggled with when I, when I pl began playing these reserve two tanks was the French heavy tank, the B1 BIS, which is located at a battle rating of 2.0. You can see it here. Now I cannot penetrate the front of the B1 BIS that I'm aware of, except for the very tiny bit of the cupola, and, and that's really not a very useful spot to shoot because there's nothing particularly useful up there to kill unless you have some sort of high explosive filler shell. And if I'm not mistaken, at this point, I hadn't unlocked the high explosive filler shell. I'm just using the stock AP shell. And so I decided to start working on this B1 BIS by trying to hit originally the side of his turret, thinking maybe that, that side armor would be a little bit thinner. And then I thought, well, I would try the obvious other weak spot that I know of on, on many tanks, and that is the turret ring itself. But he's managed to get his little turret over here, so I can't really do much. And the engine deck on this is terrible, obviously. I mean, when you can pen it with whatever that caliber gun is, it's a, it's a, it's a sad day. For the tier, for the reserve tier tank, sometimes, but he loses uh, interest in me, and he starts shooting my teammates, and that they actually penned. That penned, but look at the damage it does. I'm sure we we blackened the breach, we blackened the turret ring, but we only made the uh, the gunner red. I mean, that's not particularly useful. <laughs> and so, all I could do 
is just, is just whittle away at this guy so hopefully maybe I could kill him but I never actually ended up doing this I would shoot him until I basically ran out ran down to like three rounds of ammunition and had to go to Charlie to reload it and uh, guess what was there another B1 bus Imagine tag teaming Abyss and failing this hard. Just non penetration after non penetration. I did get a couple of penetrating shots there. But, you know, when you run out of ammo, what, what, what can you do? I, I suppose I could have blocked this, the, the Abyss from turning so that my teammate could, could get a, a, a clean shot on him. But I don't know. I, I, I wasn't feeling particularly brave, I guess. Instead, I tucked my, I tucked my tail between my legs and I went to the cap, and he actually got him. He actually got the bis. That's impressive. So after after dealing with the uh, stock shell for a while, I, I eventually unlocked the upgraded shell. That's a, I believe it's a tier four modification, and that actually includes TNT filler, and it allows you to more easily kill enemy tanks from the side. You can pen them from the front, but you, you also lose some penetration capability over the stock shell. The stock shell has a little bit better pen, so it just, it just depends on what you want to go with. Uh, ignore the APDS shell that you see in the bottom, uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. Because that's uh, that, that was a game changer there, right there. Being shot by not one but two tanks in the in the box, so I dropped artillery on them, hoping that maybe I could I could kill one of them, maybe two of them, who knows? But they just continue to light me on fire by shooting me in the engine. See one there, and there artillery gets the BT-7. The other one decides to push out. Oh, he hesitates initially. Come on. Come on, little buddy. There we go. We got his driver. And we just pump him with APDS, because why the heck not? <laughs> APDS, I don't I don't know. And this wasn't in the tank initially. A couple of days after War Thunder's uh, Swedish Tree release, they they released a mini patch that included an APDS shell for the two reserve tier tanks, as well as a later tank, I believe it was at 2.0. Now, for the later tank, I can understand. A 2.0 tank, or 1.7, or whatever it was, I can understand that having APDS, because it's only like 106 millimeters max penetration, 9 degree angle, 10 meters or something like that. So it, it's understandable, but I don't agree with it, with it being a requirement to put it on a reserve tier tank. 100 millimeters of pen at 1.0 is a bit of, of a stretch in my opinion. Um, you can pen everything you face without, without any sort of pr problem. And I know people are going to say, well, it's APDS, it's kind of like APCR, it's got high penetration, but it bounces on, on angled armor, and it doesn't have very good post-penetration damage. Well, I would agree with that, I would, I would counter that by saying that most early tier tank design were to cram a bunch of crew into a teeny tiny space, and it doesn't matter what shell you have, if you can pen the tank, you're going to be able to pretty easily kill the crew members. Sometimes it's going to take one or two shell or shots, but it really doesn't matter if it has high explosive filler or not. In my opinion, they made these reserve tier tanks a little bit too strong. But that helps Sweden a little bit later, because you can add this to your lineup. You can you can take your 1.3, 1.7 battle rating tanks. You can add these reserve tier tanks to your lineup, and you can actually still have a vehicle that is quite usable. 
when you consider the fact that Sweden has a lot of low tier tanks that don't have a turret, it makes the reserve tier tanks just that much better. You can be a, a formidable fight fighter against uh, a lot of vehicles that do have turrets. And uh, the APDS shells are really, really strong, as you saw in the highlights in today's video. And guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click that thumbs up button. And of course, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Take care, guys.